How's it going, Internet Land? Zachamus Prime, aka Zachamus Prime here, and sorry for the slightly different camera angle uh, for the figure that I'm reviewing today, which is the DX9 Gavalt. It's just large enough in both robot mode and uh, its uh, jet mode that it's kind of a pain in the ass for me to record. With my current camera's uh, field of view, and um, it was just kind of obnoxious. One of these days, I need to get myself. Yeah, I don't know. Someday I will switch to a more reliable, more versatile system, but sadly that's not today. So, anyhow, let's get into the review, and there's a lot here to review, so I'm going to not gloss or I'm not going to get too deep into it. This is the DX9 Gavalt. Um, I got some money a little bit ago, and I found this guy on the internet for a good price, and I was like, shoot, I'm going to buy it. I've worn one of these since it first came out in 2016, and uh, finally got myself one. It is a really nice figure, and uh, while aesthetically it may not hit the nail on the head quite as much as the KFC Ditka, uh, this figure is much better than Ditka in almost every other conceivable fashion. Uh, I had the opportunity to handle a Ditka, and it was just it's it left me with such a bad experience that I decided to not even review it. So there you have it. But here is the uh, the DX9 Gavalt, and it is it is just big and chunky, and this is just a super solid figure. The plastic feels great. The sculpting is great. The it's just such an enjoyable figure all around. The transformation is really well done. Uh, the engineering is just top notch. Everything on this figure feels solid. Um, I will say that not everything is always. Peaches and gravy because um, on this figure I did have an issue where with his uh, left hand where he actually came with two, there's this little block here that the thumb attaches onto. He actually came with two right hand ones and so he didn't have proper posability on his thumb which was a bit of a problem. But you know, I have, I have files and tools for for shape and stuff, so I was able to take care of that fairly evenly, and I haven't heard of that happening to anybody else. So this was, you know, just one of those random, random ass coincidences. So anyhow, so let's real quick get into his accessories. He already has equipped the uh, Gur Angry Face. Focus, focus, damn you! There you go, Gur Angry Face. In fact, I can zoom in on that. He's an angry looking dude. Light piping on the eyes, which, I mean, it doesn't look too bad from this angle. Uh, the light piping doesn't really ever do anything. Let me, let me throw some light in behind his face just to see how that looks. And I don't know. I'm not the hugest fan of light piping. In this case, because his eyes, his visor is so open and, uh, and fairly transparent looking... It's not giving him the, like, dead eyes look, so. Blessed engineering coincidence, I guess. Um, other accessories he comes with is he's got his gun here. It's just pretty simple. Four little pieces of plastic that slap together. It goes into his palm in this masterpiece-style peg. And if I can freaking get his hand to agree with me. Slap it in there like so. Curl his fingers around. And now he can shoot stuff. And uh, only real beef I have with this gun is that it looks a little small in his hand. It legitimately does. I mean, it, it's it got the aesthetics of a rifle, but it, it's like a really, really short rifle, proportionately speaking. But it's, you know, again, too long to be a, hand, a handgun, so I don't know. He also comes with a sword, same deal, slaps into this little uh, pivot there, this little tab part in his hand. And uh, the sword looks really good. Transparent, clear plastic hand, uh, blade, uh, just two pieces of plastic slapped together for the handle. And it's just, it's really good looking. Uh, and it's actually it, it looks really true to the uh, to the original sword that the guy came with. 
Uh, to swap out his face, you just kind of got to get underneath his chin. Uh, there is this tool that is um, included with this figure. It's a nice tool. I wish that they actually included it with a lot of different figures. And you just want to kind of wedge out that face. And here's a simple peg goes into the other one. And there you go. Now he's got another face. The last accessory he comes with is if you untab this from his back, his gun is actually a handgun that he can hold. And if you open up this little handle right here, and this automatically makes the optics come out, I think that's super cool. Again, masterpiece style slot. Slap this into his hand. Slap it into his hand. It is not agreeing with his thumb. His thumb doesn't like it. Not one bit. It, uh, I don't even know what to say. It hasn't given me problems like this before. So, there it goes. Jeez. Maybe it's just super particular about where the thumb is placed. But there it is, and it looks really good. Again, it could have used some paint apps, especially in here, or maybe even on the sides. Would have looked made that look really nice. Some of the uh, some of the red and the uh, gunmetal highlights that the rest of this figure gets just would have done wonders on either the purple or the beige gun. So I know that the sword and um, this gun are kind of his his traditional uh, equipment, but um, honestly, I kind of feel like all he really needed was the sword and this gun. So. Anyhow, real quick, let's get into his articulation. So his head is on a ball joint, but really all you get out of it is the swivel. And that head swivels all the way around. Uh, it doesn't really look up and down, doesn't really turn side to side. Of course, it is on this little armature, so you can, you know, chunk his head all around if you need to. But now we're getting into some Cronenberg shit there, so... Pfft. Yeah. Uh, his arms go all the way out for the full tree pose. He's got a full bicep swivel here. Double jointed elbow. He can touch his shoulder really, really good on that. The wrist is on a ball joint, which allows for full rotation. As I mentioned, there's this little block here that I had to shave down on this hand. There's a ball joint and a ball joint that connects his thumb onto it. And then on his thumb, there's a hinge. For his fingers, he's got two pins on his index finger, and then his three fingers are uh, molded together and on the same two pins. So, decent possibility on his hand. Um, I can't ever seem to get what I feel is... I mean, with the, with the thumb being able to move around like this, like that should give you a lot more like posing options and whatnot, but I can't ever seem to get what I can uh, approximate to be a really good, relaxed looking, natural pose, hand pose. So I don't know. Not that that's super important, but you know. He's got these little flaps. These are kind of like side skirts, but like not really, but they are on ball joints and they'll move out of the way just fine. He does have a skirt armor which is on a hinge, and that will also move out of the way just fine, though it's not really in the way much of the way. This, uh, this socket that the, that the hip sits inside is actually far more of an impediment than that uh, skirt armor ever was. So there it is all the way forward, not the best. There it is all the way back, really not the best. All the way to the side, maybe 60% of a Van Damme, not that great, unfortunately for the hips. 
But that being said, that posability is going to get you um, most, you know, kind of actiony kind of poses that you want to get, assuming they're not like standing high kicks or some stupid shit like that. But um, he's got a double jointed knee. This one joint will get you, the one joint all by itself gets you that far. And then there's a second joint. But a couple clicks of that will get you the full bend. So that's excellent. Swivel here at the hips. I also forgot to mention, but there is a ratcheted waist joint. So that's nice. The ankles are actually really good. So his foot, his toe, and his heel are separate. But they both are hinged and they both move together very well. You can move this heel back and forth separately and the toe will also move forward and back separately. So you can get a lot of good posability out of his feet. So any kind of pose you've got him in, you can count on the feet to keep you secure. And that is basically it for his articulation. All in all, like in terms of like his hips aren't the best articulation, but like they're still pretty decent. They're not awful. And um, and in terms of display and play, I think he's going to pretty much do everything you need him to do. And I do like how, like, look at the sculpt. So this is the turret of this tank, right? But it's painted purple in here, and it just fills all this in nicely. And there's no, like, gappy parts on them, you know? And I just really like that. I mean, I I am notorious for telling people that, oh, well, even if the figure looks solid, of course, the plastic is all hollow. Because people complain about hollow plastic. Well, hollow plastic, this hollow plastic. The plastic's always hollow. It has to be hollow. The question is, how well do you hide that hollowness? And I think that this figure actually hides it very, very well. So he is a triple changer, so we are going to flip a coin. Um, it's an Indonesian coin, so it doesn't have heads or tails. Here's a bird side, and here's a monument side of some sort and so if it's a bird we'll go for the tank mode if it's the monument we'll go for the airplane mode and flip it right off of him and we are going in airplane mode awesome possum so unfortunately this gun has no place in airplane mode I mean there is a place I'll show it to you when we get there so to get this guy whoops sorry I didn't mean to bump that to get this guy transformed up into airplane mode, first thing we're going to do is we're going to extend out his wings, fold up these flaps. On the back end here, we're going to unpeg these from these purple flaps on, on his back. And then we're going to plug this tab into that slot right there. We're going to unpeg them and then peg them right back into different stuff. So that's, uh, yeah. These will fold out, but I'm not going to do anything with them currently. This is going to unpeg, though. I'm also really not going to do anything with this currently. And we are going to get into the arms. Actually, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the fuselage out of the way. We're going to open up this panel on the back. Open up these panels here. And then this whole thing, grab his chest and yank on it. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 and that will unpeg this tab from the bottom there. And then you'll be able to bring this up. Bring these out. The head is going to slide through this little panel part right here. This is going to close, and the tab on that panel is going to plug in. Oops, there's no spot right behind the cockpit quite yet. Grab this, swing this around, fold that down like so. Now we've got a place where we can plug into this little tab on the flap. The nose cone is going to come out like so, and then you're going to fold this out and peg them together. You'll notice that this is on the slider here. You want to make sure this is slid all the way up. That's to facilitate folding up these panels and putting them in there. They will not go in if you don't have this slid all the way up. 
And now for the arms, you want to make sure that this chest panel is all the way open. Then you want to basically fold this hinge right here, fold that in, rotate that around. And then you're going to, there's a hinge, well it's a shoulder joint actually. Oh, it's just above his shoulder joint. So you're going to bring that around. You want to fold his shoulder in like so. So when this is all in place, you're going to have it folded on this hinge here and on this hinge here. The shoulder is going to be uh, basically perpendicular to his ratchet shoulder joint. So just like if his arm was hanging loosely at the side. You'll notice that that puts, get this up out of the way so I can move this back and forth. You'll notice that that puts this armor detail on what is the inside of his chest. You want to rotate this arm so that it matches up with that. Let's get this hand folded up real quick. You want to yank on this wrist, open up this panel right here. The hand is going to fold all the way in on that ball joint. The thumb is going to come around behind the hand, behind the back of the palm. Then you're going to curl the fingers around and then fold this in. And then you're going to fold this all the way up onto itself. Oh, I missed a step. There's a gray panel that sits right out here. You want to pull this around. And that is going to cover up this gap on the side here. So then fold this around and now this is ready to fold in. Boom, like so. You want to flip out this little purple panel here. Come on, flip out. And then you want to fold this around into the plug in there. And that is the arm completely done. The other side is just like the first side. So we're going to take this, pull this out and around. This gray panel is going to come around to fill in that gap. You're going to line all this stuff up here. Get the wrist put away, fold up the fingers, fold that in, close this up, fold that, slam that home, and fold out this little panel right here. Close that, bring this in, This peg goes into that slot right there. And boom, that's his arms all done. Now for the legs, what you want to do is straighten them out, peg them together. You want to come around, fold these up. Actually, let's do the... Yeah, bring this around like so. If anything, you want these to be sticking up instead of trying to line them up. Because if you try to line them up, odds are you're going to accidentally tuck them underneath the wing when you put the wing in place. And then you have to undo the wing to get them back into place. So you want to kind of make sure that these are pointed up and away. This heel... You got to like fold this back part out first and then this all folds together and it forms the complete circular exhaust which is actually kind of cool. I like it. There's a lot about this figure that I like. So now we're ready for this to part to close down. These little panels here 
are going to kind of tuck in, but they're not going to plug in anything yet. This this slot is going to go into this tab right here. Oh wait, I got to get this dick plate out of the way. There we go. So slot tab. And now you'll see that there's these like two little tabs. Those will kind of home in on the dick plate right there. This part's going to fold around and just close up on that. Straighten out his tail fins, straighten out these ailerons, and that is a complete jet. And I want to say that this is a beautiful representation of a MiG-27 Fox Bat. Uh, just, just almost picture perfect. Like, literally. I mean, I think that a lot of people look at this and be like, wow, uh, air, real airplanes aren't big and blocky like that, but um, look up a MiG-27 Fox Bat, or Firefox. Sorry, the Firefox, which was actually basically a... Uh, uh, Firefox was actually basically a retool of the Fox Bat, but anyhow, they're mostly the same shape. But I think that in terms of the cockpit and whatnot, this more closely represents the, the Firefox than the Fox Bat. But yeah, look up the Firefox and uh, you'll see it is almost exactly this. The aspect ratio is down pat, like it's all like perfect from nose to tail. Uh, with the exception of these things here, um, though you can look at this and imagine that maybe these are either underwing, you know, jet engines, which is a thing that does exist, or like underwing, uh, weapon boxes of some sort, which is also a thing that does exist. Um, so, I mean, aside from this, it's perfect. And I think that's one of the things that I like about this jet, this, this figure so much, is it has such a wonderful jet mode. Typically, um... Typically, when you have a triple changer that turns into three things, uh, and one of them is a tank, which is basically a box with a gun on top, uh, that's the one that gets taken care of, and of course the robot mode, so the airplane mode just sucks. And uh, I really like that on this figure. All three modes are actually pretty decent, but uh, I definitely think that this mode gets more love than the, uh, than the tank mode. It does have flip-out landing gears. These are plastic rolling wheels on uh, on metal struts. The uh, let me angle this down just a smidge. The center of gravity is like a quarter inch ahead of the back wheels, so it'll sit here, and they'll sit here just fine, but if you put too much pressure on the back, it will tip back. Of course, now it looks like it's either coming in for a landing, or it's like taken off or something like that. That's also a cool look, I'm just going to say. You can also plug in on the underwing here a sword. And the gun. But only this gun. The uh, the other gun has got no way to do that. So there's no place to hide this. So there he is with even more underwing armaments. And he looks double ridiculous. Though if you take this and like angle it out. Maybe he can like swing past something like really really close. And like slash it. Yeah that's not a bad idea at all. <laughs> Heavy sarcasm. But yeah, that's the, uh, the, the Firefox mode, and I love it. But let's get him into his tank mode. So his tank mode is basically, you turn this whole thing inside out. And uh, that's not a euphemism, that's literally what happens. So let's get this part untabbed here, throw the landing gear back in. Let's get these unpegged. And then you just kind of want to yank on this whole, this whole panel here. 
and that'll open that all the way up. Ugh. There we go. And then you can just kind of fold this all around. And uh, yeah, we're like halfway there now. Uh, we're almost living on a prayer. You can take these and fold them in like so. This is a good place where the tool comes in super handy. You can take your tool and wedge it into these to kind of unpeg them from that section there. Fold these out. Actually, I'm going to fold these up. That'll allow me to pull these out, which is going to be a bit easier in the long run, even though that's not how they're going to stay. And you want to fold these all the way up like that. You can take this and we will extend out these panels right here. Come on, panels. There we go. And that'll allow you to break this fuselage and push that out. Put that head all the way through again. You want to take this, swing this around, and then when you're partway through, you want to take this and rotate that. And that's going to help cover stuff up. Fold this. Split this down the way. Stab yourself in the hand with the nose cone, because why not? So I've got these kind of pointing up like that because they don't really do much at this juncture. You can bring them around and kind of park them like that. And it's not the best solution, but it is a solution. You can take his head, unpeg it from there. He does have a pretty bad case of visible head syndrome, but I'll point it out more as we get the tank mode more finalized. So for the arms, what you want to do is you want to straighten them out. You want to take this hinge right here and hinge that all the way around. And now the arm is going to sit like this. So you've still got this zigzag hinge in, in here. And you can close that back up. But now this armor detail is sitting on the top. You're going to take in here and push out this little spot right here. See, yeah, there's this right there. I'm going to push on that. to flip out this piece of armor. And that's it for that. We're going to do the same for the other side now. So I'll straighten this out. Bring this around. Put that in. And then I'm going to push on this piece from the other side. This one comes out a lot easier than that one. And then we're just going to kind of fold this in like so. Uh, these tail fins tuck underneath these flip out armor panels. Fold those in. This wing comes up and folds around. There's a tab right there on the wing that fits into this slot right here. Bam. Bam. You want to take these and plug them in on top of that chest section and then take this and fold this around. 
exposing some like headlight details. And then you can take this, unpeg this tread from itself, extend it out, and then slide it in to collapse that. It's kind of on this double hinge here. You want to move it in, and that will allow you to start pegging it in. There's about three pegs that come up the side. I'll point them out on this side if you really want me to. There's a peg that goes in there to that slot. There's a peg, oops, sorry. There's a peg that goes into that slot. There's a peg that goes into that slot. And that's it. even further down. Now you can take these, they're already going to be disconnected. Make sure that this part here gets folded in on the back and it just slots in between those, plugs in with a couple tabs, extends out. These panels, you'll see they've got two tabs right here. There's a pair of pegs on the inside of that arm and that'll plug those in and there he is in his tank mode and it's I mean it doesn't look like a real tank it's not historically or factually accurate to anything that I can find um, but it's not a bad looking tank especially in the world of you know transformers having you know completely <laughs> fictional tanks it's really not that bad it's got a rotating turret the the gun goes up and down um, like I said you do have a pretty bad case of visible head syndrome um, I think that they, I think that they could have possibly mitigated that if they had made, well, I don't know, they could have made these panels here have some sort of a function where they slide out and fold down. That's, that's what I'm just going with off the top of my head. And maybe that wouldn't work. Maybe it would. I don't know. Possibly there is another panel that they could have put on here that would have flipped around. That probably would have worked easier. But um, I think that there's ways that they could have fixed that. And those are just a couple ideas that I have off the top of my head. So the treads don't roll, but he does have a couple of wheels and he does roll quite nicely. The turret, as I mentioned, turns not like all the way, all the way. But seeing as how the entire turret splits in half, I think that's pretty decent. Um, again, you can store one of these guys here, but there's not really any place to store this gun unless you want to like chalk it into the hollow back there and have it just hanging out the back. I don't know. That doesn't seem like a good solution to me either. Um, generally I just leave this in the bag and if I, he holds a gun, he holds this gun here. And if he holds a sword, he holds this sword here. So, you know. Um, everything gets included in this it becomes superfluous in my personal loadout so there it is DX9 Gavalt I think that this figure is fantastic yes I will say straight up that this tank mode does not look anything like the tank mode that Blitzwing traditionally has or how he looked in the animation but it makes a damn good looking robot mode it makes a damn good looking jet mode and this is a good looking tank mode even if it's not you know properly colored i think that it's an excellent offering the figure is solid as hell uh, the possibility is you know serviceable um and uh just all around like this gets my full recommendation i think it's a great figure but anyhow, thank you everyone for watching. You guys are fantastic. And thanks for watching all the way to the end. Go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I do this um, fairly regularly. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, stay awesome and be good to each other. See ya. Bye.